Welcome to Live Better Longer. I'm your host, Bill Borton. These days, people are looking at retirement in completely different ways than they used to. My guest this week is very special. He's Bruce Rubin, and a friend recently told Bruce that he's an anomaly. A 75-year-old who plays basketball and runs and race walks, as well as participating in three consulting and advisory groups. Bruce would like to make everyone over retirement age an anomaly. He thinks too many are out of shape, overweight, and over-medicated Americans, and he would like to change that starting today. Bruce, welcome to the show. Thank it's you. A pleasure. Glad to so, be here. Bruce, you decided at some point that you were going to compete nationally in the senior games. Would you tell me about that? <clears throat> yes. In, in 2000, I had been playing basketball for a long time. And in 2008, I was introduced to two gentlemen from Bucks County, Pennsylvania, uh, by somebody we all knew, <clears throat> to form a three-on-three -three team to participate in the National Senior Games. Uh, I had competed in the, county, in the Montgomery County Games locally for a number of years before that. Uh, <clears throat> so based upon the introduction to my original teammates, <clears throat> we formed a three-on-three -three team in 2008, qualified by winning the state Pennsylvania State game so we could play in 2009 at Stanford University. We had just three of us. Uh, we picked up a fourth off the National Senior Games website uh, <clears throat> based upon what the gentleman had said. Uh, had described himself as a six foot two great defender. So was that the 65 to 69 group at no, that time? 65, 69. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> it turns out he was five foot 10 and couldn't have guard anybody. <laughs> But we lost every game that we played in, 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 at Stanford. Uh, had a great time, met a lot of people who we kept seeing, keep seeing every two years in mm -hmm. <coughs> other national senior games. And going to Albuquerque next June uh, for the sixth time, we'll be, we'll be participating. And we've picked up other players uh, since, and we'll be going out with five people. Uh, so now, Bruce, I know that you're a competitive guy. Right. But you're not just doing this for the ribbons and the medals, right? Right. Uh, I do this to keep in shape and play and do, and, you know, and be active and as part of life. If we win a medal, as we did in 2015 when our team won the bronze medal in Minneapolis, uh, <clears throat> that would be, you know, that's just the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. uh, I also won a ribbon in Cleveland. Uh, for coming in sixth in the 5,000 meter race walk, uh, which was, you know, <clears throat> a surprise to me and a great honor. And also in Cleveland, we only had three because three of our other teammates got sick or injured. Mm -hmm. And we landed up coming home with a ribbon for coming in fourth uh, in, in a division. After the first <clears throat> round of pool play, you're put in a you're seated based upon your results, and we mm -hmm. landed up in the A group. Uh, and that year there were 24 teams in our age group, and we landed up coming in fourth place in the A group. Mm -hmm. But we were thrilled because it was just three of us playing mm -hmm. the whole entire time. Hmm. Uh, in fact, one game, one of our teammates fouled out, and we landed up playing with just two. Wow, against three. Against three. Wow. So I know that you recently told me that you guys had to kick a guy off your team because he was too young. Yes. I thought that was pretty funny. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> we, had, we had picked up a gentleman uh, who, had, when we met, who we met in Maryland when we were playing against his team, uh, qualifying for the 2015 games, where he was the youngest guy on his team, so they had to play in our age group, even though everybody else in this team was, was well past 75 at the time. So we recruited him. <clears throat> and then uh, based That's for the 70 to 74 group. Correct. Right? And <clears throat> based upon the fact that the other members of our team uh, wanted to move up to the 75, 79 age group for the next year's games in Albuquerque. Always want to be the youngest guys. You want to be the young yeah. guys, not the old guys. <laughs> so that <clears throat> we, I had to call him as the team captain to tell him that <clears throat> I've got bad news, we're going to have to drop you, and you probably haven't heard this for a while, but you're too young for us. <laughs> uh, and so, but he, you know, he understood, and he has subsequently, because he's six foot five and a good player, uh, has been recruited by at least two other teams, so he'll be in Albuquerque playing for 
one of one team he decides to play and with. And I hope he doesn't like them better than you guys next year when he's eligible to be back on your team again. Right. But we'll, we'll see. One, one, one year at a time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One year. That's a good way of looking at things. You know, Bruce, you shared a quote with me from George Bernard Shaw, which I thought was pretty cool. Yes. Uh, I bought a T-shirt a number of years ago at one, at one of the senior games, which on the back had this George Bernard Shaw uh, quote, which says, <clears throat> we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is true. And regardless of what you participate in, be it basketball, swimming, golf, tennis, whatever, uh, stopping playing because you reach a certain age uh, <clears throat> is not a reason to stop. Uh, and <clears throat> I've seen in, in Houston, uh, I, one of my teammates, besides doing, playing basketball, does field events and was participating in the discus throw in Houston. And as part of the discus throw, there was a gentleman, 102, who got up and wow. threw the discus. Uh, also, while in Houston, uh, I was practicing for the race walk, <clears throat> I got to see the start of an 800-meter run for women. I think we have a picture of that. Yes, yes. Uh, I had to take the picture because in, in, the, in the picture are women in three age groups, 80 to 84, 85 to 89, and 90 to 94. Wow. And they ran, you know, and <clears throat> I just couldn't resist because you don't get to see that every day of the week. Mm -hmm. And people ought to be able, you know, to know that you don't have, there's no <clears throat> reason to stop. You know? mm -hmm. And in fact, when we're at Stanford, the same teammate that threw the discus <clears throat> won a bronze medal in the triple jump. And the medal ceremony, and there are medal ceremonies, right before he got his medal was the 95 to 99-year-old javelin throwers, men. Wow. And there were two gentlemen, one got the gold, one got the silver. That's terrific. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, Bruce, I know that you've had some adversity uh, in your life, particularly more recently. Uh, and I know this is not something you love talking about, but would you share a little bit about that with us so that we can get a little more perspective on what drives you? Okay. Uh, yeah. And my wife had been ill for a number of years. And uh, in November, right before th of last year, be right before Thanksgiving, uh, she passed away. Actually, it was a Sunday, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and <clears throat> I was actually playing on my Sunday morning basketball game, which I told people, if I'm not there, you know what happened, you know, and my wife passed. But <clears throat> I got the phone call while I was playing and, you know, went and, uh, you know, she had passed during during the morning. And, uh, but, you know, since I didn't want to be in the house alone with the cat that we have, uh, who's a nice companion, but you know the discussion's only one way. <clears throat> and uh, but I, you know, I became even more uh, active in work-related things during the day and look for more basketball games to play in. So mm -hmm. I'm now <clears throat> signed up, you know, during depending on the time of the year, playing Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That's terrific. And, you know, the other three days, I either go to the gym or ride my stationary mm -hmm. bike. This is inspiring to me because, you know, I'm 10 years younger than you. Neither one of us know what the word retirement means. And I like to think that, you know, living better longer is when your body, your mind, and your money all show up at the end of a really long life at the same time. Right. I agree. And right. so I know you had one other issue where I think you had a health scare, didn't you? Yes. Recently, uh, actually, the first time it happened was in September, September 21st. I stopped for gas to, to fill up my car from gas on my way to visit my son who lives in Washington, D.C. Uh, and the last thing I remember was getting the key to the men's room. Uh, but unbeknownst to me, I felt finished filling up my car, got a receipt for the gas, uh, and then called my son and said, do you need me to pick anything up at the, you know, at the supermarket before I come to your house? And he said, we just talked, and t I told you what to get. And I said, we did, because you know, I didn't realize that I was, you know, quote, unquote, out of it. Uh, I subsequently went to see a neurologist, and he called it something called transglobal amnesia, mm -hmm. which there is no cure nor understanding of how and why it happens. 
I want to talk more about what you did as a result of that diagnosis, but we need to take a break for a word from our sponsors. This is Bill Borton. We'll be back in just a moment with more Live Better Longer with my guest, Bruce Rubin. So they can be the greatest force for good in the world. It takes a force. Be a force behind the forces. Share a message today at force.uso.org. I want to be a contender. I want a warm belly to sleep on. A big house. How do I look? Do, do I look good? I want to play hard. My nails done once a month. I want. I want. I want a home. I just want a home. I want someone to love. Last year, more than 30,000 companion animals came to us without homes. 20,000 of them were felines. Let's make some homes together. Choosing Medicare coverage can be a very confusing and complicated process. Help is just a phone call away, 856-226-4800. As a licensed insurance agent, I'll assist you in making an informed and confident decision on a Medicare plan that meets your needs, lifestyle, and budget. Call me today for a free, no obligation, Medicare Ben. Welcome back to Live Better Longer. I'm Bill Borton here with my guest, Bruce Rubin. So, Bruce, right before the break, you mentioned that you had a health scare and, you know, you went to the neurologist and he diagnosed you and you are taking some medication. But you took a different approach than most people would to making sure that you regain and maintain health. Yes. Uh, another doctor that I see for my knees so I can continue to play basketball recommended the ketogenic diet as well as some other supplements to offset some of the <coughs> side effects of the medication. Mm -hmm. uh, neither, neither of which was recommended by the neurologist I saw. So I've... <coughs> So for the last two months, I've been on the ketogenic diet and I've taken these additional supplements mm -hmm. and have had no side effects from the medication, which has a long list of side effects. Potential side Potent effects. Potential sure. side effects. Mm -hmm. so, but you take no other medications, right? No, no other medications. And you, you really never do take any prescription drugs. Unless, Correct. Unless, up until very recently. Uh, this is the first drug that I've been on, you know, that would be continuous. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, if I've had the flu or something else, mm -hmm. I've, you know, taken something for, sh you know, short terms, but never anything, you know, long so term or continuous. You told me this diet that you're on, basically, you're dealing with good fat and protein, right, and vegetables and right. fruit, but no carbs, right? Correct. Yeah. And sugars. And no sugar. Because the carb. carb turns into sugar. Sugar, yeah. right. So <clears throat> I've had no issue uh, with it. I had to get used to how to stop eating my oatmeal and some bagels that I would eat during the week. But other than that, it, you know, the transition was relatively easy. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, I can, you know, I have bacon and eggs for breakfast a couple of times a week. I bought some cereals that are, you know, uh, keto friendly and, you know, can eat steak and, and whatever. Last week I was in New York City and I had to suffer through a cheese omelet and bacon for oh, breakfast. Darn, Bruce. Bacon for breakfast and a porterhouse steak mm -hmm. and spinach for dinner. I so, talk I talk a lot about people about, you know, putting what putting things in your mouth, drugs or food or faux food as I call it, right. isn't necessarily conducive to living better longer. But no. when you eat the kinds of foods that you eat and I focus on eating you know, your body stands a much better chance of regulating and staying healthy. Correct. So, you know, Bruce, you haven't always been as shapely as you are these days. Correct. You, at one point, weighed quite a bit more. <coughs> yes. Uh, somewhere towards the end of the 80s, uh, a gentleman walked into my office and said, you're far too young to have your stomach laying on your desk. And <laughs> at the time, uh, I weighed somewhere between 210 and 215. Mm -hmm. uh, then decided to go on a diet and, and an exercise program, you know, to lose weight. <coughs> the following uh, time I had a physical uh, exam by my, you know, primary physician, I lost about 20 pounds. 
And the first question out of his mouth is, are you sick? Yeah, right. And I said, no, I'm on a diet. He said, good. You know, <clears throat> the next year I went back again and lost another, had lost another 20 pounds. And he said, I assume you're still on your diet. I said, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and then for a long time, I weighed <clears throat> somewhere between 170 and 175. Uh, after my wife passed, I s felt a little uncomfortable at 175, so I went on a diet, another diet of my own mm -hmm. before the keto uh, started. <coughs> and this morning, I weighed slump slightly less than 160 pounds. That's amazing. I did. I weighed 160 when I was in high school, and I'm only about an inch taller than you, Bruce. Well, I weighed a whole lot more than 160 when I was in high school. Yeah, so. I understand. Well, you know, we we go through life doing what we do, right? Right. Absolutely. So you you mentioned. Uh, Pat Boone to me before, and in the few moments we have left, uh, I want to ask you about that. Okay, uh, <clears throat> as part of the three-on-three -three competition, uh, we played a team from Virginia called the Virginia Creepers, who were in the 80 and over group, uh, and have won gold medals uh, before when in the 75-79 group, uh, and they needed to qualify for the games in Albuquerque. We played against them, <coughs> and we beat them uh, and quite handily, and we played for one half of, you know, their, the games that when you're 80 and over are 12-minute halves versus 15-minute halves that we play. <coughs> and part of their roster, and he wasn't there that day, is Pat Boone, the singer, mm -hmm. <coughs> who's been on their team for a number, of time, a number of years now and will be coming to Albuquerque. Unfortunately, uh, they're playing at a different venue than we are, so we won't get to see him. But yeah. he is a member of the Virginia Creepers basketball team. So the whole idea of senior games is becoming more and more, uh, I guess, prominent or important as boomers are starting to age, not wanting to slow down, wanting right. to live forever. And so if somebody who's watching the show, and I think there's probably a few people that might want to, get in right. touch with you, Bruce, to find out more about the senior games and, and maybe uh, understand more about how you do things. Okay. What's the best way to get in touch with you? <coughs> well, they can email me at bruce at bhrglobal.com. Or and if they're just interested in the senior games, uh, they can go to nsga.com, which will get them to the national games as well as links to the state games to, regardless of what state they're uh, involved with and, <coughs> and live in and then you could you qualify in the even number of years for the games in the odd number of years and uh, if, if 2019 is anything like the previous years there'll be over 10,000 athletes in Albuquerque from age 50 to 100 plus participating in 20 different activities. The, the, the what I get out of all this that we've been discussing, Bruce, and the way you've chosen to live your life is, you know, just keep showing up. Correct. Just keep going. Don't uh, stop. Absolutely. Stopping is, is death, right. right? Absolutely. If you keep going, though, there's a pretty good chance you'll make it another year and another year. <laughs> absolutely. And my goal and the goal for our team is they, in, in 2017, they added the 85 and over age group to basketball. And in 2029, everybody on the team, including the gentleman we had to drop, <coughs> was quote unquote too young, will be eight, all of us will be over 85. And that's my goal, that everybody is well and able to play and participate. And win it all, and right? Win it all. right? That's super. Right. Well, you know, I really think you should be more goal oriented, Bruce. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll work on it. Oh, God. Well, it's been great having you on the show, Bruce. Thank I know we've known each other here. a long time, and I think it's terrific what you're doing, and you're an inspiration for people that they can live better longer by Absolutely. staying active and being more mindful about how they live their lives. Correct. Thanks for being on the show, Thank Bruce. Thank you. It's been for terrific. Having me. Right. This is Bill Borton. We're going to be taking a break for the holidays, and I'll see you again on January 8th, Tuesday, here at RBN TV at 11 for more Live Better Longer. Thank you. Happy holidays.